What if I told you that you could 10X your website traffic in the next 90 days using completely free technique that most business owners don't even know exists? Here's what's crazy. Most websites, they're sitting on dozens of keywords already ranking on page two of Google that could be moved to page one with just a few simple tweaks. But instead of optimizing what they already have, they're out there creating new content and hoping something sticks. I'm Matt, I run an SEO agency, and this is the exact method we use for clients who pay us $40,000 a year. See, the difference between position 10 and position three on Google is about 10X more clicks. Position 10 gets maybe two to 3% of clicks, but position three, we're talking 20 to 30% of the same searches. So today I'm walking you through our complete nine step process that finds these hidden opportunities and shows you exactly how to unlock that free traffic that's just waiting there. By the way, one of our key steps involves using specific ChatGPT prompts for competitive analysis and content optimization. I'll give you a complete collection at the end, so make sure to stick around for that. All right, step one, we're gonna go into Google Search Console. If you don't have this set up yet, pause the video right now and go set it up. It's free and it's literally Google telling you exactly what you're ranking for. Go to performance, click on pages, and then add a filter. Set the average position between 11 and 20. These are your low hanging fruit pages that are close to page one, but not quite there yet. Why positions 11 to 20? Because moving from position 12 to position four is way easier than trying to rank a brand new page from scratch. You're already in Google's good graces. You just need to prove that you deserve a higher spot. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, but Matt, what if I'm starting a brand new site and have no search console data? Don't worry, you can still use this method. Go to Ubersuggest, plug in your competitor's domain, and look for keywords they're ranking for from positions 11 to 20. That becomes your target list. You can also check Google's related searches at the bottom of any search, or dive into industry forums to see what questions people are asking. Once you've identified these opportunities, the next step is crucial. Step two, cluster related keywords. Because here's where most people make a massive mistake. They find one keyword opportunity and think, great, I'll optimize for that one keyword. But that's leaving so much money on the table. Table. Instead, you want to cluster related keywords together. So if your main keyword is best coffee maker, you also want to target top coffee machines, coffee maker reviews, best value coffee maker, all on the same page. Think of it this way, each one of those keywords might only get 50 to 100 searches a month, but when you add them all up, you're looking at closer to 500 to 1000 monthly searches for one piece of content. So here's how to find those clusters. Go back to Google Search Console and look at the queries for a specific page. You'll see a bunch of related terms that you are already ranking for. Write those down or paste them into a spreadsheet. Then check people also ask on Google, scroll to the bottom for related searches. And if you're thinking, Matt, can this work for product pages on e-commerce? Absolutely. Let's say you're selling red running shoes. You want to cluster red running shoes, crimson athletic shoes, red sneakers for running, best running footwear, and all the variations that people might search for. One optimized product page can rank for dozens of buying intent keywords. Now that you've got your keyword cluster, it's time to strategically place them. Step three, the three kings optimization. And this is where the magic happens. I call this the three kings principle, and it's probably the most important thing I'm gonna teach you today. Your main keyword needs to appear in three crucial places. Number one, the title tag. This is what shows up in Google search results. Number two, your heading one tag. This is the main headline on your page. And number three, the first sentence or paragraph on your piece of content. This tells Google immediately what that page is about. Then you have to weave your cluster keywords naturally into your H2, H3, H4 headings and throughout your body content. Now, I can already hear some of you asking, does it have to be the exact keyword? And the answer is no. Honestly, exact match can sound robotic. Each word should appear naturally, but natural variations are totally fine. Best coffee maker and top coffee makers work the same way. Another question I get asked all the time is, what about those H2 to H5 headings? Do they actually help? Yes, they absolutely do. They reinforce the topical relevance to Google. Your H1 carries the most weight, but those subheadings help Google understand the full scope of what you're covering. With your keyword strategically placed, let's make sure the technical details are dialed. Step four, optimize URLs and on-page details. Starting with your URL structure, if possible, get your main keyword in the URL. So instead of mysite.com slash blog post 47, make it mysite.com slash best coffee maker guide. Now, before you go changing URLs on existing pages, let me answer the question I know you're thinking. Should I change the URL when optimizing for an existing page? Only if it's newer content with minimal or no backlinks. And if you do change it, make sure to set up a 301 redirect from the old URL to the new one. 
But if the page has been around for years and has backlinks pointing to it, leave the URL alone and focus on the content instead. Next, update your meta description to include your keyword cluster. This doesn't directly help rankings, but it can improve your click-through rate, which Google definitely pays attention to. And don't forget the alt text on images. It's another natural place to work in your keywords without being spammy. Once your on-page elements are optimized, it's time to separate yourself from the competition. Step five, outperform the competition. And this is where things get really strategic. Go to Google and search for your main keyword and study the top three results. I mean, really study them, don't just skim. What are they missing? Outdated information, poor formatting, no images, thin content, missing obvious questions that people would have. This is where those ChatGPT prompts I mentioned earlier come in handy. I use specific prompts to analyze competitor content and identify gaps. Something like analyze these competitor articles for a keyword and tell me what's missing, what's outdated, and how I can create a better piece of content. Your job is to make your content objectively better. If they wrote 800 words, write 900. If they have five tips, give six. If their content is from 2019, make yours current with 2025 data. Add value they don't have, more examples, better visuals, actual data, FAQs, personal experience. Now I know some of you are probably frustrated because you've done all this optimizing work and you're still not ranking as high as the sites that seem less optimized. Matt, why is this site with a low optimization score ranking higher than me? Here's the thing, rankings depend on way more than just on-page optimization. There's backlinks, it's domain authority, user engagement, technical factors. There's over 200 ranking factors. But if you can consistently out-optimize and out-value your competition, you're setting yourself up to win in the long run. After you've made these improvements, you need to make sure that Google notices. Step six, re-index and track progress. Which brings us to a step most people completely skip. After you make significant updates, go back to Google Search Console and request indexing for that URL. This tells Google, hey, I updated the page, come check it out. I get asked about this a lot. Can I request indexing too often? And here's my take. It's fine for big changes like what we just did, but don't spam Google with requests for tiny tweaks. Save it for substantial updates that actually improve the content. Now here's something crucial. Track progress on all the keywords you cluster, not just the main ones. You might find you start ranking for terms you didn't even directly optimize for, which is exactly what we want. But what happens when things don't go according to plan? Step seven, troubleshooting stalls. Let's be honest, sometimes your page isn't gonna hit the top 10 after four to six weeks, even after doing everything right. When this happens, here's your systematic troubleshooting checklist. First, check the technical stuff. If your page takes five seconds to load on mobile, you're fighting an uphill battle. Use Google's PageSpeed Insights to check this. Second, look at internal linking. Are you linking to this optimized page from other relevant pages on your website? Internal links can pass authority and help Google understand what your page is about. So find three to five other pages on your website that you can naturally link to your target page using that keyword. Third, check if there's any indexing issues in Google Search Console. And sometimes Google just hasn't noticed your changes yet. And if you're in a really competitive niche, you might need a few relevant backlinks to push your content over the edge. Now, let me show you some of the tools that you can use to make this whole process a lot easier. Because while this process works with just the basics, having the right tools can make everything faster and more accurate. Here's your essential toolkit, Google Search Console. It's free and absolutely essential for this method. You can use Ubersuggest for keyword research, the free version gets you most of what you need. ChatGPT for competitive analysis, and I'll give you my exact prompts in just a minute. Any WordPress SEO plugin like Yoast or Rank Math for easy optimization, and our on-page audit tool if you want to get really technical with the troubleshooting. The beautiful thing is, all the free tools can get you 80% of the way there. You don't need expensive software to see results with this method. Look, this isn't some theoretical framework I just pulled out of thin air. This is exactly what we do for our clients who pay us thousands of dollars a month and I just walked you through the entire process for free. Now, remember those ChatGPT prompts I mentioned for competitive analysis and content optimization? I put together a complete collection of 20 ChatGPT prompts for SEO that we actually use with clients. This includes the exact prompts for content gap analysis and competitive research that can make a difference between content that ranks and content that gets buried. I'm giving these to you completely free because I want you to have the same tools we use to consistently outrank the competition. The link is right below this video. If you found any part of this video helpful, hit that subscribe button because I'm dropping behind the scenes agency content like this every single week. I'm literally teaching you our playbook for free because I believe every business owner should understand how this stuff actually works. So what page are you gonna optimize first? Drop it in the comments. I actually read them and I'd love to see what you're working. Bye.